So 2024 has been a relatively quiet one for foldable phones so far. The Honor Magic V2 finally bloody trundled its way into stores about six months after the launch with the same respect for punctuality as a British train driven by George R. R. Martin. And of course, the Magic V2 was accompanied by an even pricier Porsche design version designed specifically for posh rich twats. But besides that pair and the dinky ZTE Nubia Flip, the foldable launch schedule has been a wee bit barren this year. Just wait though, because we're not too far off several big foldable launches, including Motorola's latest Razer phones, and of course Samsung's next set of flip and fold buggers. The Z Fold 6 must be launching real real soon because it's leaking more than a paper colostomy bag. Every week we're seeing fresh renders and hearing more specs, more details. And frankly, so far it sounds about as thrilling as a 10 part documentary on traffic cones. Of course, so far it's just rumours and internet waffles, so fingers crossed Samsung's actually managed to keep some things secret for the big launch. This right here, this is my optimistic face. Anyway, let's have a squint at some of the latest Z Fold 6 rumours right after I pop off for a quick piss and a bag of skips. Oh, and we still need to do the jingle. Techspert Weekly! Now, according to pretty much every leak in recent weeks, the fresh Galaxy Z Fold 6 will be marginally squatter and a squirrel scrotum wider than last year's Z Fold 5. So in other words, that cover screen will be only marginally less weirdly narrow than usual. Reliable leaky bloke EV Leaks reckons that that front panel will again be a 6.2 incher, while a big and tucked away inside is another 7.6 incher. But brighter than ever, so you can see what the ruddy heck is actually going on even when it's proper sunny. And that front screen will apparently be coated in Gorilla Glass armour, just like Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra. So it should also be ideal for outdoor use thanks to that fantastic anti-reflective finish. You can expect an upgrade from aluminium to titanium for that frame as you kind of hope for this sort of price point. While renders have also revealed flatter edges for the Z Fold 6 just like the S24 series. So huzzah, soon every mobile will look like a f***ing iPhone and feel like you're fondling a house brick. And as for the colours, well the standard options should be navy, pink and silver shadow or whatever the f*** that is. The suggested internals aren't too surprising with the meaty Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 running the show and thankfully there's no chat about an Exynos chipset replacing that in Blighty so expect top draw performance no matter where you live. And the rumours so far seem slightly split when it comes to the battery tech. Some reckon that Samsung will stick with a 4,400mAh capacity cell. Others reckon a slight upgrade to maybe 4,600mAh. And of course with that tediously slow 25 watt charging as usual. And it is a real shame if the battery hasn't been upgraded because the likes of the OnePlus Open, the Honor Magic V2 have battery sizes approaching 5000mAh. In fact the Magic V2's was 5000mAh and it managed it while staying stupidly skinny thanks to its clever bollocks silicon carbon tech. That said, a supposed leak of the specs list in Korean suggests a bigger 4,800mAh battery will be packed in the Galaxy Z Fold 6, just like the OnePlus Open. But it also reckons that the IPX8 water resistant rating will be upgraded to IP68 dust and water resistance and also pretty much everything else contradicts all of the other rumours before it. So either this leak is total trouser or pretty much all the stuff that came before it is total trouser. I'll leave you to make up your own minds on that one. And Samsung doesn't appear to have made much of an effort to change up the camera tech either. Pretty much every leak agrees that the Galaxy Z Fold 6 will recycle most if not all of the sensors from the Fold 5, which in turn didn't exactly massively upgrade the hardware of the Z Fold 4. Although a couple of rumours suggest we might see the main sensor on the Z Fold 6 swapped out for the 200 meg Billy Big Bollocks effort as stuffed onto the Galaxy S24 Ultra, so fingers crossed that would be lovely. But it does appear again that Samsung will be relying more on AI image processing smart upgrades rather than hardware upgrades to improve your photo and video quality. And yeah, you can absolutely expect the full range of AI shenanigans to be ported over from the S24 phones, including circle to search, recording transcriptions, that weird one that tweaks your messages and makes you sound like you took a brick to the head, yada yada yada. So yeah, so far it seems that most of the desires that Samsung fans had for the Galaxy Z Fold 6 haven't really been realised. So you've still got that weird narrow cover screen that isn't really much cop, you still haven't got an S Pen bunged into a convenient bottom orifice, camera tech all seems the same etc etc. 
So yeah, it seems like the Galaxy Z Fold 6 will be the very definition of an incremental upgrade, unless of course all of these rumours are just a dripping soggy sack of donkey ejaculations. But have a good old rummage around on that internet. Stay away from all the naughty bits, obviously. And you'll find plenty of rumours that Samsung is expanding its Z Fold catalogue this year with several different alternative models. These include a Galaxy Z Fold 6 Slim, which could boast even bigger screens and, as the name implies, a skinnier design. There's also a chat of a Galaxy Z Fold 6 Ultra, which could be an upgraded version that steals those Galaxy S24 Ultra cameras wholesale, as well as adding proper S Pen support, including, yes, an actual orifice you can shove it in. On the flip side, the internet is also oozing with speculation about a Z Fold 6 FE Fan Edition, which is a slightly more cut price version of the original model. And this will likely swap out the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for an Exynos to save a bit of cash. You'll also probably have slightly pared down camera tech, maybe no telephoto shooter for instance, maybe a smaller battery, who knows. Oh, and you can absolutely expect any titanium frame to be stripped right out as well. Of course, it seems pretty bloody unlikely we're going to see four different versions of the Galaxy Z Fold 6 this year. So I can see some of them actually being the same thing, like the Slim and the Ultra being the same model. And I've got some of them could just be total made of bollocks. Hopefully all will become clear when Samsung launches the Galaxy Z Fold 6, which should be happening around July the 10th, if the recent rumours are to be believed. At the very least, we're expecting it sometime in July. As for the pricing, well, as you can imagine, Samsung's latest massive bendy blower ain't going to be cheap, so you might want to start skimming some money off the company accounts right about now. The Z46 is said to start from $1,900 US dollars, which is a whole Benny F more than last year's model. It means probably here in Blight, it'll cost about £1,900. So what do you reckon? Have these latest Galaxy Z Fold 6 rumours left you all hot and sticky or colder than a penguin's blue bits? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And now it's time for the part of the show that even makes that Traffic Cones documentary sound good. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. Let's start this week with Graceful Saint who says, I don't understand the definition of about half the words you use, but that is part of your charm. To be fair, yeah, not understanding most of what comes out of my mouth can only be an advantage. Jed Bullet says, Uncle Spurt, so I googled the Kidderminster Carpet Museum and it is a thing, it exists. Right, that's the next Saturday family out and sorted. Yeah, it absolutely does exist and it's pretty much top of the list of that we threaten my daughter with if she's been an absolute twat. Sorted out, we're off to the Kidderminster Carpet Museum this Saturday. Just a wee tip for any parents out there, another family activity threats include basically any kind of hike and a trip to Wolverhampton. Simon Kirkner says, you haven't changed at all visually. Oh, from my first episode of Techspert Weekly. So what you're basically saying is that I looked just as haggard and sick of life five years ago when I started this bollocks. We had lots of pixel related chat in the comments last week because the video was kind of sort of about some pixel phones for a few minutes. So Waxford, for instance, says Google really has to put better chips in their phones. While Richie Cow says, Google really needs to up their game, the Pixel needs a much more powerful SOC and the software needs to be way less stuttery. I mean, how embarrassing is it that Google can't get its own software as smooth as OnePlus does? Yeah, uh, it's quite clear that raw performance just absolutely is not Google's priority in much the same way that consuming five portions of fruit and veg isn't a priority for a five-year-old. You're absolutely right though, there's no excuse for the UI not being perfectly pleasingly smooth on a premium device. Personally, I've not really had any issues with the Pixel phones, I've found they've been perfectly smooth. The major issue really was the overheating, especially with those older Tensor chipsets. It's not ideal if your phone decides to shut down just because you tried checking Twitter in the sun. Your boy Pookie Pook says, I'm eagerly awaiting the release of the Pixel 9 Pro. I do not play games, do not use any applications that are demanding on the GPU. And as a result, I found that my Pixel phone functions flawlessly throughout the day, even though others have expressed concerns about it. Yeah, again, you know, heating issues aside, the tensors do a job. So let's just hope that the G4 is power efficient and doesn't get hotter than Satan's taint under the slightest bit of duress. And all will be fine. Amanda Hayward says definitely up for the big 9 Pro, so the Pixel 9 Pro XL. And Maximum Android Eng says usual 6.7 inches is a tad small for an XL label. I would wish it to be nearer to 6.9 inches. Starting to make me feel a, a tad inadequate here. 
Modestly Amazing says everyone finally copying the iPhone's superior form factor, boxed sides and flat screen. Now you do see a distressing number of Android phones starting to go that way now with the flat screens, sharp edges that bite into your palms. Personally, I find phones like that about as fun to hold as a plus-sized porcupine with severe dysentery, but hey-ho, I'm sure I'm the mental one. Next up, Dean Hoover says, as far as the Pixel 9s go, I truly hope they continue to make improvements to the cellular modem. The 8s are better than the 7s, which are much better than the 6s, but that being said, they still don't compare to the Snapdragons. Yeah, I don't know if it's got something to do with the region where I live or whatever, but I've never really had any issues with the Pixel connectivity. Although I've certainly had plenty of complaints from others in that regard, that's for sure. The Pixel 8s, yeah, was absolutely fine for me. Maybe it's just the way I hold it, eh, Apple? And Kev Waller says, still using a fully working Pixel 3a, not giving up the ghost yet. Nice one, yeah, the Pixel 3a, that was a proper dinky wee morpho as well, wasn't it? Although those bezels were thicker than Logan Paul. Estuez says, you lot need to stick with a phone you've got for a few years and then upgrade. Then you notice a real difference. You're paying £1,000 for what? Not a lot, and it'll be full of glitches for the first six months. You should absolutely be best buds with Kev, the Pixel 3 lad. He knows what's up. But yeah, it's absolutely true, especially with the likes of iPhones and stuff. I found they're always buggy as hell for those first few months until the upgrades finally seep out and sort all the little issues and stuff out. So yeah, I would definitely recommend not immediately upgrading to any phone. Not till it's had a wee time for bedding in. Shauna Jagan says, Please people, stop buying big phones. I want smaller ones again from a Zenfone 9 user. Absolutely hard agree. Less XL models, more mini mobiles, please. Tommy M says, if you like those dessert beers, then try Vault City for sours. Perfect for summer if we actually get one. Oh, I absolutely smash a Vault City. I think I'm the only one in my drinking circle that actually appreciates a sour. So when I'm a bit toasted and feeling like a bit of a prick, which let's face it is my default rest and state, I usually get a round of them in at the pub, thin and complete innocence, of course. Oh, buggy, you don't like sours? Shit. And then, you know, humbly accepting to drink, everyone's pint for them. Basically, the moral of this crap story is don't ever go drinking with me because I'm a massive c Emperor Grayman says boxes or briefs. Oh, boxes, for sure, especially when you're wearing a bit of shorts in the summer, affords a nice bit of ventilation. Do appreciate the occasional cool waft on the old man bag, keeps it from cementing itself to your inner thigh. Rango Django says, I've been watching your videos ever since your Rakombu days, still going strong with the content. Well, I'm still banging on about phones and occasionally my testicles, and more infeasibly, people are still actually watching it as well. But yeah, much appreciated, man. Rakombu was five, six years ago now, so yeah, quite, quite, a, quite a while. Matt Sidford asks, Chris, how do you manage to stay so positive after so long? I guess I just try and see the good in everything, Matt. Uh, apart from dickheads like Andrew Tate, obviously, he's just a c down to the bone. And Matt continues, any chance of a comment about why Moto are making phones with bloody curved screens? Uh, they didn't specifically say why they went for a curved screen on the Edge 50 Pro and Ultra, but I definitely wish that they wouldn't because it balked the sensitivity at times. And imagine, as usual, it's just because they look cool despite absolutely farting in the face of practicality. It's basically anything that can be classed as fashion. Really running out of time, so better make these last couple of comments. Uh, so David Lee says, if you punch yourself in the face and it hurts, are you weak or strong? I think if you punch yourself in the mug, it mostly makes you a f***ing idiot. Unless you're Edward Norton in Fight Club. And last up, Momo no Suki Kazuki says, I'll make you a jingle jungle because I love you, Mr. Spurt. Oh, thanks, buddy. That's very sweet indeed. Look forward to hearing it. So as always, a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week and just frankly, everyone who just watches this every week as well. Please do tap, -tap, -tap your comments down below. We'll smash our way through as many of those as possible next week. Yeah, and speaking of next week. Next week, next week. What the f*** is next week? So no launches next week is going to be a bit of a quieter one, although it's starting to ramp up again towards the end of June, start of July. But I finally have Sony's Xperia 1 Mark 6 stashed in my shorts, so expect a full review on that next week. I have my sim slapped in there for a few days already. And please do join me again this time and next week for another marvellous edition of TechSpurred Weekly. In the meantime, have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend. Cheers, everyone. Love you.